This recording may sound kind of funny because my microphone doesn't seem to be working, but I wanted to try and get a recording in for you so that you could review for your tests next week. This podcast deals with electrochemistry, which is math for electrolysis. At a later time, I'm actually going to explain what electrolysis is, but you already know that there's E0, which is the measured voltage from a cell, and so you've already done electromotive force, and you've talked about overall cell potential which we've used finding a standard reduction potential chart. And we've done this cell. If you look back in how to draw an electrochemical cell, this cell is actually in there. And so this standard zinc and copper electrode actually produces 1.10 volts. Now, what would happen if I actually forced a current through this cell more than 1.10 volts. In other words, I'm going to take an outside source, maybe a power source or a current from somewhere else, and I'm going to force it in here. And let's say I put in 5 volts. Well, if the electrons are marching along the wire in this direction with a force of 1.10 volts, and I push 5.0 volts this way, I'm actually going to reverse my electrical flow. And that's what electrolysis is. And again, we'll go into exactly what's happening in the cell later on. But for this test, you need to understand the math. So there's two types of problems. First, there's a problem where you know the mass and you're going to find the time. And the second type of problem where you know the time and you find the mass. So let's try one of each. This first problem reads, how long would it take to plate 38 grams of copper metal onto a piece of metal if 38 amps is passed through a solution of copper sulfate. And it's a solution because it's aqueous. So let's follow along with my standard. What do you know? Let's go ahead and underline what we know. We know we have 38 grams of copper. We know there's 38 amps is being passed through a solution, and the solution is copper, and this copper is Cu2 plus ions. We know that. What don't we know? We don't know how long. And so what kind of problem is this? It's you know the mass, find the time, problem A. So let's go ahead and solve it. So you go ahead and start with what you know. You're going to start with 38 grams of copper. And what you need to do is you need to change that to moles. So I'm going to put grams down here and moles up here. And if you look on the periodic table, that's moles of stuff. And the periodic table from last year, our moles of stuff is 63.55 grams, or something like that. 63.55 grams. Now, that's in one mole of stuff. Now, I say stuff because you're used to seeing in the standard reduction potential charts that copper, 2 plus ions, actually need two electrons to make one mole of copper. So this is my two moles of electrons right here. See, my two moles of electrons to make one mole of solid stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this because get it out of the way. Or what you can simply do is you can look at this 2 plus and say, hey, how many electrons does that need to catch? It needs to catch two. So my next step, I'm going to take these words up here and put them down here. That's going to help pull me through. So my moles of solid stuff is going to turn into moles of electrons. It takes one mole of solid stuff, and I need two moles of electrons. All right? So where did I get that from? From my standard reduction potential chart, or the fact that this is 2 plus. Now, what you need to know is there's a guy named Michael Faraday, and Michael Faraday said that if you sit on the side of a wire, and electricity is going through that wire, and one mole passes this point right here. So I've got a bunch of electrons going by. Not a dozen, not 500, not 5,000, but one mole. That's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd electrons. That in every one mole of electrons, there's this thing called 96500 coulombs. Now, coulombs is flow of electricity. So if one mole of electrons passes this point, that means I've had 96500 coulombs of, the, or how much flow has gone past that point. Almost like a river. Think about that. If one molecule goes by, two molecules, three molecules, so what does one mole of electrons equal? 96500 coulombs of flow, of coulombs. So that's a nice conversion factor to take us from moles of electrons to actual flow of electricity. 
So that's Faraday's number. Now, the other tricky part is these are amps. And amps are like an amplifier. Think of it that way. So if my brother Kip is in the basement or in his room, and my mom is telling him to turn his amplifier down and he turns it up, he's actually having more flow. There's his amplifier. He's having more flow of electricity to go into the amplifier so that more sound can come out. So that 38 amps, you need to physically change amps to coulombs per second. That's a fact. One amp is equal to a coulomb per second. So what was a coulomb again? Oh, a coulomb is flow. So it's how much flow is going through my wire per second. So how much flow is going through my wire per second? 38 amps, or 38 coulombs, in every one second. That's how much flow goes through that wire every one second. So I'm going to use my words here. I'm going to take coulombs, right? Coulombs is right here. I'm going to put coulombs down here. And I put seconds up top, and in every one second, there are 38 coulombs in one second. So look what I've done. I've changed grams to moles. I've changed moles of stuff into moles of electrons right here. And in this step, I've changed moles of electrons into flow of electricity, according to Faraday's number. And then I've taken my amplifier, my amps, and changed that into flow of electricity per every one second. That's this step right here. Okay? Now, how long? Let's just say how long is in seconds to make it simpler. And actually, I don't know about you, but I'm talking seconds. So let's change it to how many minutes. So how would I do that? I have seconds here, and I put minutes up top. And every one minute, there's 60 seconds. And you know, it really wouldn't matter at this point how much, um, oops, sorry about that. Oh, goodness. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let me get this back here. So 60 seconds. It really wouldn't matter. If it said how long, then you know what? Seconds would be fine. But in this case, let's go ahead and change it to minutes because that makes more sense. So I'm going to raise this up here. So I can put the answer up top. And on your calculator, you would do 38 divided by 63.55 times 2 times 96500 zero, zero, divided by 38 divided by 60. And the answer I get is 96.17 minutes, right? Because what happens? Our grams of copper, solid copper cancel. Our moles cancel. Our moles of electrons cancel. That's why we set it up this way. My coulombs cancel. My seconds cancel. I'm left with minutes. Okay, how about that? And so if you look, and I'm not going to talk about sig figs too much here, but if I've got 38 grams, three sig figs, and 38 amps, three sig figs, 38.0, 38.0, that means this needs to be three significant figures. What's the seven due to the one? It rounds it up. So my true answer would be 96.2 minutes. But at this point, I want you to understand the process. So let's do the next page. Oops. I didn't write my problem down, did I? So let's have 42 minutes. Okay. So we run for 42 minutes. I'm having such trouble with my microphone, I didn't say the right version. And for 42 minutes, I've got 30.6 amps running through, a current running through there. And I've got it running through a a solution of aluminum plus three ions. And I want to know how many grams of aluminum I can plate out. So what do you start with? You start with 42 minutes. And I need to change minutes into seconds. And I know I need to change minutes into seconds. Right? I put minutes down here and seconds up top. Because I know that in my mind, I know that amps right here really truly is coulombs per second. I need to change that. So that means I can put seconds down here and coulombs up top, and in every one second, I've got 30.6 coulombs. I've got that much flow every second going through my wire. Now what's the next step? If you get stuck, you take this C up top and you put it down here, and you say, okay, what do I know about electricity? I know that Michael Faraday 
said that 9,000, or excuse me, 96,500 coulombs of flow go through the wire every time one mole of electrons passes by. So that allows me to change coulombs to moles of electrons. Now some of you might say, oh, I know how to change moles to grams, but you're not ready yet, are you? Because on the periodic table, it's moles of stuff, not moles of electrons. How many electrons do you have? Three. And if you think about it, that's because aluminum plus three aqueous needs three electrons to make one mole of solid aluminum, right? Whoops, what am I doing here? One mole of aluminum, solid. That's a fact. So I'm going to put moles of electrons down here. If you notice, I always write words. I'm really good at this, but I write words just in case I write it backwards. This is moles of solid aluminum. I've got three moles of electrons for one mole of stuff. One mole of aluminum, right? Three moles and one mole. Now what? Now I'm ready to change moles of aluminum into grams of aluminum. And in every one mole of aluminum on the periodic table, there's 26.98 grams. And now I'm ready to do my math. 42.0 times 60 times 30.6 divided 96500 divided by 3 times 26.98. And when I do that, I get 7.186. I've got three sig figs here and three sig figs here. What's the 6 due to the 8? It rounds it to 7.19 grams of aluminum. And that's how you do these problems. There's a really good video here that shows you about how metal plating occurs. And this is very important if I want to plate silver. If you have silver at home, your silver spoons are not solid silver. Chrome bumpers are made this way. And so this is a nice video that kind of shows you how this works.